my name is Roni Porat. I'm almost 57. I'm married to my beloved wife, Naama, and the father of four boys. For many years, I used to travel the world, get up on stages, turn my back on people, and wave my hands in uh, various strange ways. As you can recognize, I'm an orchestra conductor. Now you used to see people like this, orchestra conductors, usually for, from their back, right? And now today you have the opportunity to face a real conductor. And even more than that, you have the opportunity to learn, because I will share, what does it mean to conduct from my point of view? Now, not only to conduct orchestra, to conduct life, to conduct business. So. In the next hour, plus minus, I'm going to share with you some of the significant ideas and principles of conducting success. Conducting success is the name that I gave to a series of lectures and seminars that I lead, dedicated to management and personal leadership, and it is all inspired by the world of music that I've been living and breathing for three decades now. I want you to go back home, not only with good memories, that's okay, but I want you to go back home also with tools and with things that you can use and implement in your life and in your business. And for this, I will dedicate the second part of my lecture, leadership and personal management. Now, usually, when they teach us leadership, they teach us how to lead other people, okay? And I'm talking about personal management. What does it mean? I think you understand, but I will say it. How do we manage and how do we lead the only one person that we will be ever able to influence? The only one person that you can guarantee that will live with you until your last day on earth. The only one person that you really can trust as a partner in life. The person who is sitting right now in your chair, you yourself. And this is personal leadership. How to work with ourselves, how to work with the managers. And you are great managers and you work with so many people. How do you work with yourself? How do we do it? How can we improve there? And I see the personal management as a crucial, as a key for greatness in managing others. First of all, work with yourself. Okay? And my line is, be the person that you would want to follow. Be the person that you would want to follow. You'll see it later. So, a part of, the, of this thing, you know, is be open for me. And be open means share and ask people to share also. Okay, because before we are great managers or great conductors, we are first of all human beings. And this connects us. Nevertheless, that we live, you know, thousand kilometers from one another. We are first of all human beings, you know. So I will share with you my story. November 1988. I'm a student starting my last year at the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. I'm boarding a flight 
from Tel Aviv airport to Eilat, the city on the Dead Sea. I'm boarding a flight of 40 minutes from Tel Aviv to Eilat to perform on the boardwalk as a juggler and a magician. These are skills that I have acquired during the 80s when I was performing on the streets. All the 80s, for 10 years, I used to go every summer to Europe to perform on the streets. Anyway, like 30 years later, I took my family, my wife and four boys, last summer to Europe for 40 days on the streets. My wife said it was horrible. I think it was great. We are still together. But I can tell you something. There are so many, so I can give you a, a complete lecture about this, yes? But I tell you one thing. My children, who are now in ages of 12, 14, 16, and 18, make their living alone. They make money. They go to perform here and there. They found a way, you know, it opened their head. It is possible to do strange things and different things and to survive because this was a survival trip. So let's go back to the flight from Tel Aviv to Elat. So I'm a student starting my last year and I'm in the academy. I'm a student for guitar and conducting. That's what I studied, guitar and conducting. And I took a flight to Elat and up there in the heights, I met a friend that I haven't seen for many years. Shlomi was his, his, his name. And he asked me what I'm doing. And I told him that I'm just finishing my last year at the Jerusalem Academy of Music, conducting and guitar. And he looked at me and said, wow, I've been looking for you. Something like this. And then Shlomi said this. You know, I've just finished my theater studies. Shlomi was studying theater here in Tel Aviv University, and I got a great opportunity, he said, to direct a performance at the next Israel festival. He's only a student and he got an opportunity to direct a performance. That's interesting, okay. And then he tells me, you know, Ronnie, we had a production meeting last week, and we think that comes the time to find a composer for this performance. Now, I refresh your memory. I was not composing. I'm a guitarist and a conducting student. Haven't composed anything. This happens up in the air above the Dead Sea. And this opportunity was thrown to me. What do I do with this? Now I ask you, my friends, how many people here in this room would immediately say yes? How many? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Not about composing. You manage your company in China now. And someone comes and tells you you are opening in eight months another company with other products because you are uh, probably a good manager in France. And you have to make an event of the opening and to give one hour speech in French. How many people say yes immediately? Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to my story. This is the idea. How many people, in fact, realistic, would say no? Put up your hand. How many people say no? Of course. Be realistic. You're not a composer. Why say yes? First, be a composer. And then say yes. My mother, is, she's like this. She's realistic. All my life she said, be realistic. I have selective ear. Very good ear, but selective. How many people in this room would say, wow, wow. <laughs> How do you translate wow? Okay, 
Wow, let me think of it. Mm. How many people say, of course. Okay, how many people already said yes or no and now say, let me think of it. <laughs> how many of you did already say yes or no and now said, let me think of it. You see, we feel very comfortable in the middle. Okay? We can go up, we can go down. In the middle, it's, we feel very safe. Okay. okay yeah. <laughs> and how many people here in this room did not raise their hand yet? Please raise your hand. Hmm? Everybody raised their hand? There must be even one that did not. You, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Oh, it's good you came. <laughs> Okay, look, let's look at it for a moment. Right now in this room, there were four styles of hand pointing that represent what we call communication style. Now you have to know it as managers, that you have many people in your organization and they are very, very different in the way that they react. And they will always react in a different way because they have their own way of reactions. They have their own style. There are people who say yes. There are people who say first of all no. There are people who want to think about the things and wait. There are people who never talk. It doesn't mean that these are better than the others. They are all human beings, but they have their own style. And when we understand this, when we understand, and I teach communication styles, because we have to change ourselves as managers according to the communication style of our people. We have to catch it and change ourselves quickly. You can learn it. And then you create good communication between you and everybody. And this I have to know on stage because musicians are like this as well. They are different. They are different. And I know that if a musician in my orchestra starts to talk and say, no, I don't like what you do. It can happen. It can happen. This is him. This is his, his way of reaction. And I know that if in the classroom there is a one child that was not talking for a year, it doesn't mean that he's an idiot. He's of this style, of these children that are waiting, they're not pointing their hands. You have to know it. I'm not teaching it now. But this is something very important. And we have to understand that people will always react to us, not according to who we are, according to who they are. Okay? And this is something to take home. Let's go further. So you have reacted to my story the way you did. And what do you think I told my friend Shlomi when he asked me, do you want to compose for us? What did I tell him? Hmm? What do you think? Yes. yes. I look like this kind of uh, the yes man. You're right. Now we talk about career advancement. I said yes. And this is how it happened. That I boarded a flight in Tel Aviv, a guitarist. And I landed in a lot, 40 minutes later, a composer for the Israel Festival. <laughs> now, let's be serious. Where did this advancement, this progress really happen? In the physical world? Did I become a composer at that moment? No. It happened, no. I was not composing. It happened only in my head, my visionary. I saw myself a composer at that moment. I have a habit. How do I treat opportunities? I call it, say yes, just to be on the safe side. Now it has to be based on your values, of course. Don't say yes for anything. It has to be based on your values. But most of the time we don't say yes because we are afraid to fail. And later on I will I have some ideas to share with you about failure, which is connected to success very strongly. Say yes just to be on the safe side and I add to it, why take a risk? Why take a risk? Because saying no in this flight was meaning no composer. Saying yes was meaning let's get off the plane, try to compose, see if it works. If it works, great, I can do it. If not, my friend, sorry, I tried, it didn't work. Let's drink a cup of coffee, I will pay for it, and I get you another composer. That's possible. But open the opportunity, guys. When the opportunity comes, say, first of all, yes. 
It's like when a lover coming home and before he leaves, put the foot in the door. Leave it open. Don't be afraid. It's okay. You know, failure and success are going together. The more you fail, there is more chance that you will succeed. I failed so many times in my life. So many times. This is personal management, how to treat failure. Say yes, just to be on the safe side. Napoleon Hill, an American author, 100 years ago, he wrote a book that called Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. And he was researching success of 500 Americans that were the most successful Americans 100 years ago. And he found out that one thing in common to all of them, the way that they take decisions. And what he find, found out is here, successful people make their decisions quickly and change their minds slowly. Failures make their decisions slowly and change their minds quickly. Think about yourself. If you are strong, if you manage yourself very well, you will take decisions, you will understand the opportunity, and you will sit on it, we say in Hebrew, until it will work. Until it will work. You won't change your mind quickly. And some people, they take time until they take decisions, then after a day they change their minds. You want people in your organization that when you give them a task, they do it no matter what. No matter what. We have to learn this because success is there. But it connected very well with failure. Let's talk now about conducting. And we go deeper to conducting ourselves. But first of all, we're going to see one of the greatest conductors ever, American Leonard Bernstein. Watch him now and ask yourself if you want in your organization people like this, if you want yourself to be like this, what can you learn from him? What is in him? What is there that we can take home? your day like this? Sorry? Have you ever finished your day like this? Uh, Completely exhausted. He gave everything there. What do you see here? What do you like here? He enjoys every moment. He enjoys every moment. What else, my friends? What do we see here? What can we take from Leonard Bernstein? Please translate us. Focus. Focus. He's focus. And yeah. Make all the efforts. Make all the effort. Gives himself completely. He's completely one with what he's doing. This is something very important. What else? We can find some things here. Follow. Somebody follow. Uh, people will follow. People will follow him. And we have to ask ourselves, why do they follow him? And this will be what we'll do right now. Why do they really follow him? And we follow him. Very passionate. very passionate about what he's doing. And you know, 
20 years after he died, people see it like this. There is something in there we have to learn from him. Today we learn from Bernstein and very soon we learn from Beethoven. With this we will end. Okay, conducting success. How does he conduct his success? Okay, now I tell you. Leonard Bernstein had pretty bad habits in life. He used to smoke, you can see him in pictures. He used to smoke three packs a day, 60 cigarettes a day for 40 years. He died of emphysema when he was very young, 72. He didn't manage himself well on the physical world, okay? You know, Leonard Bernstein did not drink liquids that fish can survive inside. I mean, he was drinking alcohol and coffee all his life. Almost no water. He had very bad habits. He could smoke three packs a day because he smoked at night also. He had to wake up for cigarettes. It is crazy, okay? Nevertheless, you can still see this man almost dead at a certain moment here on stage like this. Ah! You woke up now. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. You were not, but... Yeah, you see, when something happens extreme, you wake up. Wow, there's something in here. What happens? We have to move ourselves, you know? Yeah, this is about life. Look at him, look at Bernstein. This is the way he's on stage. He's enjoying himself. He's happy. He's dedicated. He's one with himself. He's the king of the world. And more than anything, and this will take from him, this word, enthusiasm. My dear friends, conducting success, how do we conduct ourselves? How do we conduct our enthusiasm? If I will not come in front of you today to give a lecture with enthusiasm, all the way from the Philharmonic to here, I thought to myself, I repeated, this is going to be a great lecture. I'm going to love this lecture. I love these people. It is going to be wonderful. I give my best. This is the way I manage myself. This is the way I talk to myself. I am my partner. Enthusiasm. My friends, if you go back to your company and you have a great idea and you come to your people, you know, I have a great idea. My idea is, you know, they fall asleep. Drink the enthusiasm. Drink your ideas. First of all, work with it and bring life to it, you know. Bring life to it. And if you work on enthusiasm, people will follow you. This is the first thing. No, you have good values. Unfortunately, in our world, there are some leaders and there were some leaders with great enthusiasm but very bad values and people follow them. Now if we are good people in the world and we want to do good things for the world, we have to have, we have to work on our enthusiasm. People will follow us. Something about enthusiasm and failure. And here I go back to failure. I love failures. I love it. You know, we are in a process in life anyway. And one day we look back and we say, oh, my life was success. And then we forget that we, you know, we, we once bought a bad car. We forget it. It's not important. Okay? There was probably a failure there with this car that I bought. So what? But we look on life and say, this was great life. This was great success. The next uh, sentence refers to uh, Winston Churchill, I think so, and he said like this, success consists on going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. My friend, to succeed in life means to go from failure to failure and not losing enthusiasm because we stand back on our feet. And this is so important to understand and we have to work on it. You know how many times a one-year-old child fails in life? Fails standing, <coughs> fails walking. Thousands of times, thousands of times he fails 
and fails and fall down and fall down and fall down. But I've never seen a 70 years old person walking like this. I never seen and saying, I tried, it didn't work. Okay? You know, we try and we fall and we try and we fall and we try and it falls a thousand times, but at the end we stand and you all stand. We are a great success just by the thing that we stand and we can walk. When we were kids, we did not. I want to do something about conducting with you. And I want to ask you to come over, please. Hello, my lady. Yes. What is your name, please? Sally. Sally. Nice meeting you. Where are you from, Sally? Hong Kong. I'm going to give you a very short uh, conducting lesson. Okay. Have you ever held a baton? Yep. Okay, conductor's baton. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold it like this. Okay. 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 Uh, are you familiar with Ludwig van Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 5? You remember it? Uh, That's right. It's the most, most familiar motif in classical music, maybe. We are going to talk later. Why? Why did it become such a success? We are going to learn from it. But first, conducting lesson. Now, you're going to conduct this da 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 da, a part of the first movement. The first thing that I want you to do after the first note, da 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 da, pa da da da, to catch the beat. And then think that you bounce a ball and go with the music and with the beat. Are you ready to try? Okay. Give me a sign. Yes. Wait, listen to it. Okay, now catch the beat. And it grows, and it grows. Hold it. Give them a sign, great. Okay. Clarinet, clarinet are coming now. Horns, energy. And it grows. Now two horns are playing from there. Strings are very soft. Clarinet, a flute like sunshine. But the beat is inside always. The heart. Stop. Good. She did it. Cloud. Now, Sally, yes. I want to ask you, as a leader, did you have an impact on the music that we heard from here? No. 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 Yes. Unfortunately, no. Yes. You were not leading the music. The music was leading you. Yes. Okay. I just pretend they are... Uh, ah, you others. pretend in your yeah. imagination you were a leader, yes. but in fact, this was a leader. I it was leading you? Yes, I followed Okay, it. so you were in a state of reaction, we call it. Hmm. In a state of response, okay? Now I want you to lead, because in this course, in this lecture, I teach you leading. So, the next piece will be very easy to, not so complicated like this one, but this is your orchestra. And what they are asked to do, and you, that you give them a sign and they do one only one hand clap okay. together and very, very strong together. One, only one hand clap. And you have your presence, your look, your baton. Go ahead. Okay, wait, wait. Give, you, give yourself a mark. Okay, between one and 100. How, how much would you give yourself for the result? Too many. Huh? Too many person, too many. I, I have hundred on stage. Get them together again. Try again. First of all, look at their eyes. Everybody's eyes. Face them. Look at them. And make sure that they are with you. And then you have to give them the right sign to give one hand clap together. 
Only one. Puff. That's it. How do you get it together from everybody? Together? Together. Okay. Without counting. Okay, this was pretty good. Except to this lady. <laughs> this was pretty good. Okay. Second try. <laughs> okay, this was much better. Now, there is a preparation. You did this and this. The preparation gives the time to our people to prepare themselves with this. Okay, so you did it naturally. The first thing, puff. Okay, now it has to have a rhythmical aspect in it. So I would suggest that you do tuck, tuck, puff. Do one, two, three. One, two. Good. Follow her now. Follow her. Good. Why does it work? Because we have a clue. We know when it will come. But the most important thing about it, by the way, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have a concert tonight with the Philharmonic. I can give you 10 minutes. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, good. Yes. Just to be on the safe side. Yes. No, take the opportunity. <laughs> okay. Take the opportunity. We, the conductors, Hear the music. Listen carefully. Before it appears in the physical world, we hear it inside. I hear this club before. I hear it. And then I puff, catch it. And when I conduct Beethoven Symphony No. 5, I hear inside exactly what I want. I hear this. Ba -ba -ba -bom, ba -ba -ba -ba. And then I go, get on stage. I hear it. I look at the people and I manifest it from my imagination inside. Like what you sell in your companies, like your ideas. You have to see it perfectly in your mind and to manifest it. I hear it now. I don't hear it when they play, I hear it before. And I follow myself, I follow what I hear here. I don't follow the orchestra, I follow what I hear inside perfect inside and they follow me this is the idea of leadership in conducting we have to be there before our people and when the orchestra recognize that the manager the conductor hears everything inside before it happens they get confident they feel good and they want to follow him and this is very important for you to understand so this was one aspect about leadership we have to see it before perfectly and follow ourselves, our partner, our conducting success. We have to see the success, to see it, and to go towards people will follow us. How do we gain power? Now let's go back to Beethoven. This music, you all know, it is familiar. But we have to ask ourselves, what is in it? Why is it familiar? Why it is such a great product, if we call it product, that for 200 years, everybody in the world, they know this music. What can we learn from it? You know, it's a brand, Beethoven Symphony No. 5, more than Coca-Cola. People use it for 200 years and all over the world. This is crazy. So what I'm talking about now is about the presence of this music. This is the word, presence. It has presence. But we also want to have presence. And we also want to be strong and that people will look at us and say, Beethoven number five. So let's try and learn from Beethoven what is in there. And I want to share with you something about Beethoven, about power and about our inner power. So to understand Beethoven, I would like first to relate to the way that our mind works, the inner world. And to this end, I wrote down three principles that characterize the way that our mind works. Listen carefully. Principle number one, only I think in my mind. Is it okay? Did you ever think about the fact that you and only you have ever thought inside your head? 
no one else have ever thought inside your head and you never thought in anyone else's head. You have the freedom, you have your world in your head. Principle number two. Our mind can think only one thought at any given moment. Even if thoughts are changing from a second to second, still there is a room in our mind for one thought at a time. Okay? And if you just had now a thought, rejecting this idea, so rejection was there, but not the idea anymore. Only one thought at a time. And principle number three, we can think at any moment whatever thought we choose. Now let's make a little exercise in order to understand number three. Think about a color. Choose a color, think about it in your mind. Any color, free. It's okay? Put up your hand when you, are, when you have it. Okay, good. Think now about an animal. Whatever animal you choose. It's okay? You have it? Okay. Now paint the animal with the color you chose before. Does it look strange? For some of you, of course. I don't know what you chose. Okay. Change the color with the... Change the animal with the car. Your dreams car. Anyone you want. Have it? Paint the car with the color that you chose at the beginning. Any car that you want. Get in the car. I don't know which car. I don't know where is this car parking at all. It's your mind. Get in the car. Take the keys from your left pocket with your right hand. You see, it's strange, but it happens in your mind. You see it in your way. Turn on the ignition. Listen to the motor. Think of where you want to drive. Start driving. Put your head out of the window. Feel the wind. I don't know where you are. I don't know how you feel it, it's your thoughts. Now the last questions. Can you give yourself these instructions without me? Right. It's your mind, you can do whatever you want. And the last question, the very last question. Did, for instance, when you were driving and you were putting your head out of the window, did you think about your bank account? No. And about the last argument, no. And not even about the love. Because you were somewhere else in your mind. And there is a room for one thought only. We can choose it and it happens only in our head. Now let's go back to Beethoven and understand something. Ludwig van Beethoven. What does he do here? You know, there are many reasons why this piece is so powerful. There are many reasons why this piece has such presence. But I'm going to share with you one reason only. 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 Something strange happened. I've repeated myself. That, that, was, that was what I did. And already your curiosity was aroused. aroused. What's happening here? Beethoven is doing just the same thing. He's repeating this motif of ta 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 170 times only at the first movement. Pa ba 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 pa ba 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 ta ga da dam 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 Beethoven is OCD. How do you say? Obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> With his motif. Do you think it's happened only in the first movement? No. Later on, 
in another movement. Ta 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 ta, ta ta in another way. Ta 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 ta, ta 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 ta, ta 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 ta. This is on the third movement, and also in the fourth movement. And once I conducted this piece with the Philharmonic, and I asked the musicians, when you are worried about the fact that this motif of ta 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 appears throughout the symphony, and they say no, only in the first movement. And what about the last movement? No. And they played for years, many more times than I, and they were not aware. It's like you are not aware of your thoughts, you know, of what you're doing. It's also in the fourth movement. Listen carefully. Takatatam, 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 pa 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 pam, takatatam, 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 tikatatam, 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 pa 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 pam, tikatatam, 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 pa 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 pam. Close to 600 times throughout the symphony. Amazing. And now, my friends, if we understand that something that is repeated again and 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 again creates an effect, influence, impact, presence, if we understand, so don't we have to ask ourselves what is my ta 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 tam? Me, the manager, what is going on in my head that is repeated again and again and again and again and again that creates my presence, my power, my communication with all that entails? Everything. Start from there in the inner world, in the way that you work with your partner, the manager that you are. With only one person that will be beside you until your last day, as I said at the beginning. What is going on in the head? Do you tell yourself inside, wow, what a beautiful day, I love life. Or, I hate the government, you cannot trust people, everybody is awful. It's yours, you can choose it, you know, but it will affect your energy. It will affect the way that you will look by other people your presence, your impact. Do you know people that stand like this? <sighs> what goes on in the head? Oh, this is beautiful life, let's find an old lady helper across the street. No! No! And you won't see someone look, walk like this. Uh, excuse me, where can I kill myself here? My friends, if you feel low, and I feel low many times, my life is not only flowers, but I stand straight. Stand straight. And you will find that it's almost impossible to think low and to stand straight. It's a dissonance. It doesn't work. But we can always stand like this. Also, if our car was stolen, it's okay. Stand like this. You will be strong. It's a word of advice. So let's look again. Only I think in my mind. Our mind can think only one thought at any given moment. And we can think at any moment whatever thought we choose. So, we learn from Beethoven about our mind, about repetition. Now if we take this idea for success and failure, for instance, what I said, people, that succeed, like uh, what we saw Napoleon Hill. He said, people that succeed, take a decision and don't change their mind quickly. This is like this, this is ta-ta-ta-ta. I do it, 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 I do it. At the end, you'll do it. This is the way I work with myself, like a composition. All the way from the Philharmonic to here, my head was walking like this. This is going to be a great lecture. This is going to be a great lecture. This is going to be a great lecture. This is my ta 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 before lectures. You know, my head could work in a different way. Oh, what I do? It's very late. I'm going to meet people from China. They don't speak English. And I will sweat. It's going to be horrible. I hope I will survive. Some people work like this. If you are managers, work with yourself. It's going to be great. I'm going to give my best. I love these people. 
this runs through my head. I love these people. That's what I do. Okay? So we did a lot today. We did a lot today. And uh, it was great, great experience for me to come and work a little bit with you. And this is for me the time to tell you that uh, I would love to see you again, whether here or in China. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.